and my Redeemer. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The basis of our thanksgiving, Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Amen. Thanksgiving uh, is an un, is a unusual activity. It, it is it, it has to be taught and earned. Amen. Parents know that. One of the first things you teach your children to say is what? Thank you. Especially when they receive something. And um, uh, we have to teach them that because what? That's just good manners. And it also is a way of getting blessed even more. You know that? Some of our children don't know that. But if you just say thank you to your parents, that, 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 that'll get you more blessings. Amen. America does have a history of saying thank you. The Plymouth colonists and the Wampagano Indians shared an autumn harvest feast that is acknowledged today as one of the first Thanksgivings celebrations in the colonies. For more than two centuries, days of Thanksgiving were celebrated by individual colonies and states. It wasn't until 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, that President Lincoln proclaimed uh, National Thanksgiving Day to be held in November. Amen. I had a slide for Lincoln to show up, but I guess he didn't show up on, on the slide. That's all right. <laughs> the, 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 the list of things for which we give thanks for is long. Yes. We give thanks for our body, for our soul, for our eyes, our ears, and all of our members. Uh, our reasons and our senses, our clothing, our shoes, our food, our drink, our houses, our homes, our spouses, our children, our land, our animals, our money, our goods, our, our, the, those who rule over us, our government, the weather, peace, health, discipline, good, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and everything that goes towards supporting our body and our life. All of that stuff is good. All of it is from a generous hand of God. It is our duty as Christians of this nation to take time and give special thanks to God for all the gifts that he showers upon us and our land and his people. Giving thanks is much more than just stirring up an attitude of gratitude as we chomp down on our turkey drumstick, amen, yeah, and reach across the table for another wedge of pumpkin pie, yeah. Giving thanks involves more than counting our blessings and feeling grateful. I, I'm sure that all 10 of the lepers that Jesus healed that day were grateful, all of them as they walked along the road and noticed that their leprosy had been healed. And I'm sorry, to, and I'm sorry, and I'm sure that they were plenty thankful to Jesus in their hearts for having answered their prayers and to have mercy upon their souls. But I'm certain they were brimming with, with gratitude as they showered and showed themselves to the priest and were welcomed back into the communities. But only one of them, only one, stepped back to tell Jesus, thank you, and worship him as Lord and Savior. Webster's Dictionary defines the word thanksgiving as a formal public expression of thanks to God. And there's something about giving thanks together to God that breaks down barriers between people and brings about a unity. Now look, church. Psalms 100 was written for the people of Israel, but its focus was on the Lord. God had basically said to them, when you come into the promised land and settle down in your warm homes and you have plenty to eat 
He said this, don't forget about me. Yeah, so many times when God bless us, we forget about who brought us through. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God says, I led you through the wilderness and I brought you into the land flowing with milk and honey. But it doesn't take very long to realize that the people of Israel needed a reminder. And I'm afraid a lot of us need a reminder today too. And maybe God had us in mind too when, when this psalm was written. Did, did you notice that to whom he addressed the praise to? It look, look at verse, it says, it is addressed to all the earth. And the last verse says, that includes all generations. The importance of thanksgiving is so deep and wide that it applies to every person everywhere and every generation who had ever lived. Every generation. The old ones and the, the young ones. The babies. Everybody needs to know how to give thanks to God. Psalm 100 is a hymn that was sung while entering the temple. And it probably was done in connection with the Thanksgiving ceremony. I wish I could have my temple show up right now. <laughs> I wish I could get my temple up there. I got three temples I want to show you. Amen. I wish I could show my temples. <laughs> I, see, I, I, I did have a, I did, you know, work on the sermon. It's not, not, not something I just did today, this morning, you know. Uh, yeah, they, they're going to work on it they, anyway. The, because the temple is important. I keep clicking. Click one more. That's Lincoln. I, that, that, that was way back when. There we go. Uh, wait a minute. Click, click, keep, keep, keep clicking. Yeah, there we go. Keep clicking. There we go. There's my temple. All right. All right. Now that's what the temple looks like. Bible says, okay, hold up one second. This, this whole right there. Go back to me now. Go back to me. Amen. There we go. There we go. Psalm 100 is a hymn that was sung while entering the temple, and it probably was done in connection with Thanksgiving ceremony. Let's look at the 100 Psalm emphasize. It says, let's look at what the scan the Psalms, and you see in verse 1, we find the name of the Lord. In verse 2, we find the name of the Lord. In verse 3, we find the name of the Lord. In verse 4, he says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Look, every time you come into this place, every time you enter on the courtyard out there, you ought to be giving God some praise. Thanksgiving. We ought to be thanking God that he allowed us to come into this place and have an opportunity to give thanks to him. Yeah, yeah, that's the basis of our thanksgiving, that God has brought us through. Now, if God never done nothing for you, you don't have to thank him. If he never, if he never healed your body, if he never brought you through a prior situation, if he never got you through your homework when you needed somebody to get you through your work, if God never done anything for you, you don't owe God the thanks. But if God woke you up this morning, if he got you on your feet this morning, if he woke you up in your right mind, you ought to give God some praise. And you know why you ought to give him praise? Because you didn't do it. Alex Haley, the author of Roots, had an unusual picture hanging on his office wall. It was a picture of a, herb, of a turtle on top of a fence post. And when asked, why is that turtle there? I would tell you the answer, every time I write something significant, every time I read my words and think they are wonderful, and I begin to feel proud of myself, I look down at the turtle on top of the fence post and remember that he didn't get there by himself. Y'all, did y'all just hear what I just said? You didn't get where you got by yourself. It was God that got you through. I know I'm right about it. He had some help. How many of us have had some help? Oh yeah. Where did your help come from? Our help came from the Lord. It came from God. 
Without the goodness of the Lord, where would we be? Without the love of God, where would we be? Without the faithfulness of God, where would we be? But it took God. Did you know that you know that you know that it was God that brought us through? Not your, not not your, not not everything that you could do. Yes, God has given me some abilities, some skills, some some knowledge, some education. He's given me that, and I've gone a long ways on that. But I know that in the final analysis, that it was still God that made a way out of nowhere. Oh yes, church, y'all sitting there like y'all looking at me funny this morning. Now the one hundred psalm was written for the people of God, for the people of Israel, and it focused on the Lord. But Psalms one hundred is also filled with commands. Look at verse one. It says, "Shout for joy, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth." That that's a that's a command. That ain't no suggestion. That ain't, that ain't no hint. That ain't no clue. God is telling you that when you come into His presence, you ought to shout for joy. Oh yes, oh yes. There's nothing more healthy for the soul and, and more cleansing of the mind. There is nothing that makes the human being more happy than utterly and completely praising the Lord. Thanksgiving doesn't require bounty, doesn't require you to give God anything. Just recognition of what the Savior has done for us. It is so easy for us to say, woe is me. It is easy for many of us to curse God. To blame God when calamity comes in our lives. But when we have things up, we got things upside down. Yes, we live in a fallen world. We all have sin. The wages of sin is death. It is the only the grace of God that we have. Even in the bad times, the good times, it is God's grace that gets us through. Oh, now, the God looking at me funny. I don't think some people realize what grace is. Grace is God's unmerited favor. That means you can do nothing for it and nothing you didn't do. You can't get it. Because you know, there's a whole lot of folks that say, God, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do that. So, so, <laughs> yeah, I heard what the, the deacon said, I don't do that no more. And yeah. Yeah, but the, the, but, the, but the reality of the matter is, is some of us think that because we don't do it anymore, we are more holier than anybody else. That we deserve to get God's blessings. And then there are those who feel like they have done some things. I've done, I've tired, I come to church every Sunday. I do this and I do that and I do that. So I deserve God's blessings. And what God says is, no, nothing you do or didn't do can get my grace. It is it is something that you cannot earn. It is because of my love towards you that I give it to you. God's grace is sufficient. And, 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 and so many of us don't really grab what it means to have that grace because we think there's something, because we, 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 we grow up in a society where you got to do stuff to get stuff. Are, are y'all with me? You got to do stuff to get stuff. If you, want, if you want an education, you got to go to school. Are you with me? Amen. If you want a good job, you got, to, you got to do some things to get the good job. But if you want a good house, you got to have some money. You understand what I'm saying? You can't get nothing in this world if you don't have nothing. But God's grace is this. You don't have to have anything to get his grace. All you got to do is accept what Christ did on the cross. And his grace is Oh, yes. Robert E. Bruce describes the following incident. While walking along a busy street one day, he heard uh, someone singing. His sweet voice was distinguishable even above the noise of the traffic. And when he located him, he noticed that he had no legs and was pushing himself through the crowd in a wheelchair. Catching up with him, he said, I want you to know, my friend, that to hear singing from a person in your condition gives everyone else a lift. He answered with a grateful grateful smile. He said, when I stopped looking at what I had lost and began concentrating on what I had left, 
I found much for which I could rejoice and be happy. Did you hear that? If we quit focusing on what we don't have and focus on what God has given us, we got some reasons to praise God. We got some reasons to shout. We got a command to give joy, to have joy in what God is doing for us. We ought to get in praise. Verses 4 and 5. Enter into his gates of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. In the New Testament, in the Old Testament, now I'm giving my temple again, the temple symbolized the presence of God. So whenever people came into the temple, and entered the courts, they knew that they had come into the presence of God. That temple, click to the next one. That temple is, is beautiful. Those are the gates that you had to go through. Click, the, click one more, because that's, that's the old temple. That's the old temple. How you had to, when they, when, they, when they built it, when they had to build it and move it, and move it and build it, build, move it and build it. But you see, the, but everybody had to go through those gates. The Bible says when you come to those gates, you better give God some praise. You better give God some thanks. And when you come into the courts, those courts before you get to the main temple, when you come into the courts, not even in the temple, you better give God some praise. Look, church, you are not coming to church thinking that you need to get something out. Did you hear me this morning? I know I preached it before, but I'm going to say it again. Most of us come, I think the lead church says, I didn't get that now. Well, the reason why you didn't get that now, because you didn't put that in. And I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about praise. I'm talking about things to I'm talking about thanking God for what he's done for you. I'm talking about giving him praise for what he's done. You ought to give him praise. You ought to praise his holy name. But we don't have the temple anymore. Yes, we got a sanctuary. But the temple really is in all of us. It's when we go to work. When we care for our children. When we go to school. Every moment of our lives. God dwells within us. That's his temple. It's in us. And we ought to give God some praise. Yes, yes. There was a man who served a medical, as a medical missionary for many years in India. He served in an area where there was progressive blindness. People were born with healthy vision, but there was something in the area that caused people to lose their sight as they matured. Well, this medical missionary developed a process that would stop progressive blindness. So people came to him and he performed his operation. And they would leave realizing that they, would, that they would not have to become blind anymore, that they would be able to see. But now they were being able to see for the rest of their lives. The people never said thank you to this missionary because that phrase is not quite in their dialect. Instead, they spoke of a word that meant, I will tell your name. Whenever they went, they would tell the name of the missionary who had cured their blindness. They had received something so wonderful that they eagerly proclaimed it. Have you ever received something so wonderful that you want to tell everybody about it? That you want to tell everybody about something that happened to you? Well, when Christ came into your life, when Jesus saved us, you ought to, be, you ought to tell somebody about his name. Yeah, when you surrender to the Lord, when you give all your burdens to the Lord, when God has lifted the burdens of you, from, your, from your life, suddenly we realize that God has been so good to us. Yes. And if God has been so good to you, you ought to be able, you ought to want to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, church. 
I can't say it like I really want to say it. But you ought to just give God some praise. He is worthy to be praised. So church, every time I come into this place, I don't care how many people are here, I don't care who's here, I'm going to give him praise. Because I know that God is good to me. He's brought me a mighty long way. A mighty long way. What that song say? Mighty long way. Mighty long way. A mighty long way. The long way. You brought me. Me. Mighty long way. Amen. Give God some praise, son. Give him thanks. Give him thanks this morning. Amen. 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 Will you stand with me, church? God has brought us a mighty long way. And that's the basis of our thanksgiving. It is because of what God has done in our lives. All of us can thank God this morning. Psalm 100 is a mighty, mighty good psalm. It is a mighty good psalm that tells us that we ought to give God praise. Even in the midst of our troubles. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what, 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 what problems you may have, what situation you may have. But I tell you, you ought to still give God thanks. Not for the circumstance, but in the circumstance. When you place it in your situation, God has a way of wanting to hear from you. Yes, yes. That's what the writer says. That's what the writer says. God will hear from us. He will hear our prayers, hear our cries. Yes, he will. Sing it, sing it, daughter, sing it. Gracious God, we thank you for all your goodness and your mercy. We thank you because you are a mighty good God who does all things 
well. You are the only living and true God. And before you, there is no other. We give you praise today, oh God. We thank you because you've been so good to us. We thank you because you woke us up. We thank you, oh God, because you got us up in our right mind. We thank you, God, because you put shoes on our feet. We thank you, God, because you put shelter over our heads. We thank you, God, because you protected us while we slept and slumbered. We thank you, God, because you looked over our children. We thank you, God, because you looked over our parents. We thank you, God, because you gave us a job to go to. We thank you, God, because you gave us income beyond our working year. We thank you, God, because you've been so good to us. We thank you, God, because you brought us through. We thank you, God, because you are merciful, God. We thank you, God, because you are graceful, God. We thank you, God, because you are loving, God. We just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, you've been so good to us. You've been merciful to us. We ask, oh, God, that you would continue to look over our family. Our children, our world, oh God. We look for those who are standing around this altar, Heavenly Father. You know all about the things that they are challenged with today. You know all the sicknesses that they have to face. And oh God, we just, we just ask that you just continue to heal the body of Sister Children's right there. Continue to heal the body of Sister Shirley over there. Continue to touch Sister Harrison, oh God, continue to raise up all of those, oh God, who's been through some heartbreak and some heartaches, oh God. But God, we know that you are a mind regulator and a heart fixer. Continue to touch our minds, oh God, continue to heal our souls. Oh gracious God, we know you can. We know that you are a God of reconciliation, a God who's able to put people back together again. Oh, Heavenly Father, forgive us for being so short-sighted. Forgive us, oh God, for not doing the things that we're supposed to do. Forgive us, oh God, for omitting and the things that we're supposed to do and committing some of the things we shouldn't have done. Forgive us right now, God. And then give us strength, oh God, and hope and boldness to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Oh God, trust help us now. Then Heavenly Father, for those of us who are in financial situations, God, who need a blessing from on high. Oh God, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Open up the doors for those who need a job. Open up people to use our products and our services right now for those who own businesses. Oh God, pray. Help those, oh God, who need a promotion on their jobs. Find favor with the bosses and those who need to make decisions right now. And then, Heavenly Father, we just give you praise today for our children. God, continue to put a hedge around them. Get them ready to go back to school, oh God, and get ready for the ending of this semester, this term. Help their minds stay focused on their books and the things that they need to do. And then, gracious God, we pray for those in the homeless ministry. Give them strength, oh God, to do the work that you've called them to do for this time. And those who are providing for the coats and things, oh God, for the people that's cold right now, that don't have a roof over their head. Help us, oh God, to help them. Give us compassion, oh God, to love the unlovely. And then, oh God, when all of our prayers have been prayed, all of our songs have been sung. Our duty has been done. Oh God, bless us now that we might be able to hear your name saying, servant, well done. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus and for Christ's sake. Amen, amen, and amen. Give God some praise today. He is worthy to be